second claim we will examine, that Adam and Eve were the first parents of the entire human race. The Church has been very clear on this point of doctrine. In fact, in November of 1909, the Church issued an official First Presidency Statement dealing with the idea of creationism and evolution. In that official statement, the prophets of the Church stated that, It is held by some that Adam was not the first man upon this earth, and that the original human being was a development from lower orders of the animal creation. How these, however, are the theories of men. The word of the Lord declared that Adam was the first man of all men and we are therefore in duty bound to regard him as the primal parent of our race. The Book of Mormon also teaches this doctrine. Lehi taught his son Jacob that, and after Adam and Eve had partaken of the forbidden fruit, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden to till the earth, and they have brought forth children, yea, even the family of all the earth. When we combine the idea that Adam and Eve were the first humans and parents for all of the human race, with the doctrine that the fall of Adam took place about 6,000 years ago. This means that the whole of humanity has only existed during that time. Joseph's revelations also claimed that, before he died, Adam called together all of his righteous descendants and blessed them in a valley in Missouri, which is called Adam on Diamond, which is near a place called Spring Hill. This is near where the church teaches that the Garden of Eden was located and where mankind got its start. Before Christ's second coming in glory, Adam and his righteous posterity, which includes saints of all dispensations, will again assemble in this valley to meet with the Savior. These teachings and revelations about Adam on Diamond and what has taken place there in the past and what will take place there in the future depend on the claims of Mormonism concerning the Garden of Eden being Missouri and that being where the human race got its start. So how do we go about testing this claim? Well, if this doctrine is correct, then there should be no evidence of human beings dying or even existing upon the face of the planet before about 6,000 years ago. If we can find evidence of human settlements and migrations before about 4,000 BC, or find evidence that human beings originated somewhere else besides Missouri, then it would show that these doctrines are false. The Human Genome Project has helped us be able to read and understand our DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to child, and it mutates at a fairly regular rate. If a woman has a mutation in her mitochondrial DNA, all of her children will have that mutation, and her daughters will pass it on to their children. Y chromosome DNA behaves in a similar way for fathers. This means that closely related persons will share most of their DNA mutation markers, while those who are not closely related will not share as many. This allows us to look at the DNA of a person and trace back their lineage, and where their ancestors migrated from. This study has uncovered evidence that tells us all human beings can trace their lineage back to Africa. It suggests that our most recent common female ancestor lived in Africa about 150,000 years ago, and our most recent common male ancestor also lived in Africa about 60,000 years ago. The evidence indicates that human beings began to migrate out of Africa about 60,000 years ago and continued to migrate across the world, finally reaching the Americas about 20 to 15,000 years ago. Mitochondrial Eve is the name scientists have given to the most recent common ancestor for all human beings now living on Earth. She lived in what is now Tanzania over 150,000 years ago. Archaeology has uncovered evidence that the first agricultural revolution started about 10,000 years ago and formed the basis for, de for the development of human civilization. The oldest human settlements are known to date back to this time. The fall of Adam supposedly happened over 10,000 years after the Eastern Asians migrated to the Americas, several thousand years after the invention of farming, and a couple of thousand years after the Sumerians invented glue and the Babylonians developed the brewing of beer. The doctrine that Adam was the first man of all men the first parent of the entire human race, is not compatible with the physical evidence. The doctrine of mankind getting its start in Missouri at Adam on Diamon is also contrary to the evidence that suggests that mankind originated in Africa. So why does this matter? Why should we care about the history of the natural world when it comes to the revelations of Joseph Smith? Wasn't his calling only to restore the one true church and make available the ordinances that make it possible for us to return and live with God? So who cares if you couldn't understand how coal was formed or about DNA or, I mean, how could you have understood those things? The, the problem is, is that these are official doctrines. They are not 
advertises simply being his opinion. They are supposed to be the literal word of God given to Joseph Smith about mankind, the plan of salvation, the creation of the world, and how God did it. That these revelations and scriptures are incorrect about the natural world suggests that wherever these ideas and doctrines originated, they did not come from a divine source like Joseph claimed. This casts doubts upon the reliability of the other revelations that cannot be tested, that there is no physical evidence for, and upon the claim that the Mormon Church is the exclusive one true church upon the face of the earth. Apostle Bruce R. McConkie perhaps had more influence on Mormon doctrine and Mormon thought than any other man in the 20th century, save maybe his father-in-law, Joseph Fielding Smith. In the October 1984 LDS General Conference, speaking in his role as a prophet, seer, and revelator, Bruce R. McConkie taught the vital importance of the necessity of the member's belief in the fall of Adam. He said, I propose some simple tests that all of us may take to determine if we are true to the faith. They consist of a few basic questions, all of which must be answered correctly in order to gain the full blessings of the gospel in this life and inherit eternal life in the realms of head. The second test that Apostle McConkie proposed was, Do I believe in the fall of Adam? There is no salvation in a system of religion that rejects the doctrine of the fall or assumes man is the end product of evolution and so is not subject to a fall. True believers know that this earth and man and all forms of life were created in an Edenic or paradisical state in which there was no mortality, no procreation, and no death. In that primeval day, Adam and Eve were in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But in the providences of the Lord, Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. By his fall, Adam introduced a temporal and spiritual death into the world, and caused this earth life to become a probationary state. So according to this man, who claims to be a representative of God on earth, the members of the church have to believe in the literal fall of Adam in order to inherit eternal life, and be considered true to the faith. This puts those members of the church who cannot reject science in favor of dogma in a very difficult position. Perhaps you would like to excuse Elder McConkie in saying that he was just expressing his opinion. I disagree with this. First, he did not state this as merely his opinion, but a requirement for all members. He was speaking in his role as a prophet, seer, and revelator, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, in conference, in an official capacity. Any Mormon will tell you how much weight what the Brethren say in conference carries. In my next video, I hope that you will join me as we examine the Mormon doctrines concerning Noah's flood and the Tower of Babel, and examine how well they explain the physical evidence, and I hope you join me for that.